Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energy. She noticed the width of zero to one is about that far. And then two is real close, three is real close, four is even closer. So when this thing's over about where I got my finger, where I got the needle setting, we're looking pretty close to about eight, ten amps, something like that. The wind's trying to push it back and forth a little bit. Well, if you'll notice down here, this will come on and off pretty regularly. There it goes. Looking at 14. It's really overpowering. I need a little bit more of a dump load down here. So I brought this. Don't know if I'll get to that today. Trying to do a few things. Well, I've got the tape drive motor back up kicking again. To slow things down, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn a few things on around here. Number one, I'll turn that fluorescent on up on top. I'll turn this one on here. Got that one and that one running. That's going to drop it back down. We got 15 to 20 mile an hour winds today with 30 mile an hour gusts and I've seen 40 on one of the local stations. It's on again. Yep, it's kicking pretty hard. Gonna have to add some dump load to this. <laughs> yep, drop that down real good this time. That's good. A little bit of load added to it helps out a lot. So we got 35 watts up there and I, I think that's about 30 watts. I'm not too sure. I never did really read the back of it. But I know it's efficient lighting. It does pretty good. Anyway, we're going to get back out here. Another thing I'm trying is got a little bit of hamburger meat out there in one of them car windshield covers. Got it taped to the front of the vehicle because it's kind of windy. And I got the pot holding down there. Maybe later on I'll make some ramen noodle. I'm hoping that'll get up the temperature to cook the pound and a half of, uh, actually 1.42 pounds of hamburger meat. Yeah, I just eat her like she is. That's where I'm at right now. Well, if you look at her, I'm going to hold the camera perfectly still here. You see the pole rock back and forth about an inch. Not that bad in the heavy wind. It's pretty, but I don't have it very long from the roof here. That's probably right at about, oh, right at about shoulder level or less when I stand on the roof here. And I put this up here. This is an LED light made a little video on it yesterday. I'll probably post it after I do this. That thing is kicking as long as the wind turbine is going. When the wind turbine dies down and the wind turbine gets down to about 5.65 volts, this goes out. You'll see it kind of flicker a little bit. I think it's about to do it here. Well, it doesn't look like the wind's going to drop. There you go. Get a little bit of flicker right there. Might drop out a little bit. No, nope. it didn't get down much below 6 volts there. Anyway, that's enough of that. We got our set of piece of PVC that runs over to uh, the wind turbine side of the uh, blocking diode. Well, at this point, the wind picked up and took me completely out of the audio, so I'll explain this. Right there, you see the orange wire. Well, it comes out of the top of the pole and wraps all the way around back up to the top, and that uh, ring lug on the ground wire has got a screw through it that holds it and keeps it from going back down the pole. The screw also goes inside and stops the motor from sliding back any farther. I did it this way so there would be no tension on the wires and I could keep at least one whole foot of wire inside the tube. Now if you look just to the left of the pole and just behind the orange wire you'll see a dot there. That's a screw that goes into that notch on the side of the motor to keep it from twisting around and twisting my wires up again. And it seems to be working out pretty good. Now look at the size of that bird. He wants to invite some bunny to breakfast. So you're probably wondering how I found the notch the first time with a Phillips screwdriver and a drywall stinger standing at the top of a ladder at night after the wind had died down. <laughs> well, I slid a light down inside the back end of the wind turbine, and before I put the motor in, I took my Sharpie marker, and from both of those notches, I drew a line from those notches to the center of the motor. Then I slid the motor back, making sure that the wire did not line up with that long slot, and uh, as I got it all the way to the back, I could see those lines clearly, and I stuck the screw in, and I turned it until the PVC started to push out just a little bit to give it some spring tension. And the plumber's clamp that I had uh, was a little bit too big and would not adjust all the way down, so I'll have to get another one and put it on in a few days. Okay, as you see this right here, that's how it slides in and out. I'm going to have to put a pin in there, just like they've got right here. Now this element right here 
nichrome resistance wire, I believe, or tungsten. When I put the ohmmeter across here and really mash hard to make sure that it sets and uh, gets a good reading, I've got 1.7 ohms. This is 1300 watts or 1500 watts. It usually runs this one and this one in series for 1500 watts. And then just these for the lower wattage. Yeah, we're kicking juice. Anyway, 1.7 ohms divided into 12 volts. So 12 volts divided by 1.7 uh, gives me 7 amps. 7 amps times 12 volts gives me 84 watts. Just this alone because the resistance is so low. But this longer resistance isn't going to do me as much good for 12 volts. This uh, measured out to be 10.6 ohms. That says uh, 1.13 amps. 1.13 amps times 12 is 13.56 watts. Not that great. And when you put them all in series, I got 12.2 ohms going through the whole thing, which gives me 0.98 amps. Well, that's not very good either. 0.98 amps times 12 is right at about 12 watts. That's even lower than 13.56. But just using this, just like it is at this length, will give me 84 watts. That's almost two of these 50 watt bulbs. That's not bad. Plus, I hooked the jumper cables across it a while ago. And it got pretty hot. <laughs> it didn't glow, but you doesn't want to touch it and hang on to it. So it's nice it's inside here. And I like this, and I let the air vent up through it like that. It took a few minutes to warm up, but it darn sure kicked up. So I think it's going to do real great uh, as a dump load. I don't need these. Eh, I'm happy with the little bit I got. I'm going to play with that for a dump load. Well, as you see, I got this inside now. The sun's gone down. Eh, the hamburger started to cook a little bit. Not much. I think I caught it too late in the day. Didn't get a chance to heat up. Plus, the wind was taking all the heat. But I got plenty of sawdust. Here's something I played with at home. Yeah, it's a coffee can. Got a hole stuck in the side. And I'll show you in a little bit. Boy, she's cooking. You can hear it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's almost done. Set that down here. Ooh, yeah. Take this off here and show you what's going on. See, there's a hole down the center. Stick one piece of pipe down the middle and shove it down there. One from the side over here where the hole is, and then you start packing that sawdust layer by layer. And it's like a rocket stove. And man, it really burns. <laughs> it doesn't work on the smaller cans, but it works real good on this. I use this in the fire uh, in the wood stove at home first. Anyway, I'm a little hungry. get this back on here. I've got something else from Belgrade Machine. We're going to do the next little meal with it when I got a little more time to play. But anyway, there we go. We've got that cooking. Maybe some ramen noodles to go with it. Lots of fun. That's kicking real nice. Man, I mean to tell you, that thing cooked fast. As soon as I put the camera down last, I went to looking for a spatula that I know I brought with me, but evidently didn't. Ah, oh, within two, three minutes. I felt some nice, fine, grade-A restaurant carcinogens. And I said, whoa, take the lid off, and had to stir it up a little bit and move it around. Got it all at one end of the pan and a couple little pieces of carcinogens, and I kind of threw those out. But anyway, yeah, she's about ready. Didn't take long, less than five minutes to cook this whole thing. Wow, that was pretty fast. Well, for right now, there's my gravy and my plate, and there's uh, my spatula, my makeshift quick alcohol sanitized by gosh spatula for the project. Now that I got something to stir it with and get it up with, uh, we're doing okay. Uh, I guess I'll uh, go ahead and dump the grease into the sawdust in the stove and I'll throw some water on there and get my noodles going. Alrighty. Mm, so there's my ground cow. Looking pretty good. I didn't waste any of it except about, probably about four or five teaspoons. Not too bad. Mm, got my ramen noodles cooking over there. Two packages. Oh gone. I'm gonna have so much to eat I'm gonna need a forklift. Ha! Ah! Oh yeah, just a couple minutes later. Them's all done now. Oh yeah, right on top of the meat there. Yeah, I got a few stuff. That's after work. <laughs> oh yeah. You don't need to be a good cook to do ramen noodles. Should have only done one package after all that meat. I ain't the greatest cook, but they say never trust a skinny cook, huh? <laughs> I definitely ain't skinny. There we go. That's alright. <laughs> Boy, that's hot. Anyway, 
while we're at it, it seemed to hollow out in the bottom there. I have to take the camera off to show you that. Look, you know, you look kind of sideways there. See, it's burning around to the sides. Don't know if the camera's going to see it. The bottom is burnt out first. It's still got that chimney hole up there. It's quite got quite a bit on top. Let's see what we can see inside here. <laughs> There's quite a bit left there. That's been going about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Hooey! And that'll keep on going for a long time, but that's a lot of sawdust. Next time I cook out, we're going to go ahead and take a sawdust stove that Belgrade Machine made for me. Quite a treat. We'll take that off of there. I got a pie tin for that. I'm just a spinning. Anyway, I could let this burn out, and if I was in the shop at night, if I had me a piece of stove pipe, I know they're pretty close to the same size as a coffee can. I could lengthen that up, get one heck of a draw, and that stove pipe would get nice and hot. But, no way to get it in the shop and get that smoke outside. So that doesn't really do me too good, unless I build some kind of a makeshift wall. It's a little late in the season. But uh, pretty neat idea. Didn't know about these until uh, afterward. You notice the wood around the bottom is catching. That is actually burning because that bottom gets hot. I'll dump a little water on her. But I'm going to put the pipe tin on top for now. That's going to shut down the oxygen. Woo, that got hot quick. Now she's just going to smoke a bit. Keep my eye on it. Probably just pour some water around the bottom of it. I'll just let the rest of it smoke for a while and cool off. There's a lot of... A lot of sawdust for one little meal, but that is one heck of a meal. You know, with a coffee can, if you got sawdust, you can cook a nice meal for the family. I'm Scott Brown, Green Wind, and other home energies. Many good things to you and yours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that ought to do enough. That ought to make it nice and safe. Ooh, time to eat.